Hey guys, Dave from Wolfhard Hobbying here, and today we're going to continue our look at painting the House Garitzi Blood Engine. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at painting his um, back piece here, this engine or uh, canister, whatever it happens to be, as well as his armor right here. Um, I'm choosing to do both in this video just because they're going to be the same color and we're going to be doing the same effects on it. So, to come in, I'm using Vallejo Model Color Brass. Uh, you could also do this in a copper color as it does remind me of uh, a distillery canister or whatever they're called. Um, but I went with the brass as uh, I'm not too fond of a copper color and uh, so as personal preference you could go either way on this one. But I have thinned down the paint just a little bit with some medium um, as Vallejo model colors tend to be very thick pigments. So just to get a nice smooth base coat, uh, you will want to thin it down just a little bit. So here we're just finishing up the, uh, the stack on the back of the engine, whatever it's used for. Uh, this is very easy base coating to do as this is a huge piece on the model and only where it the rivets are on the side where it attaches to the back you have to really be careful about where you're painting and at the top of the canister on the back piece as well but overall the main pieces of that back piece are off the model so base coating is really easy you could also paint this off of the model and then glue it on later but I chose to uh, assemble this whole thing first. So as you can see I'm achieving a nice thin e layer of uh, the brass here which is going on smooth and even which is uh, what we want. I don't want paint globbing up anywhere. Now at the end of these stacks here I paint in there the brass color but you could easily um, paint it in black and then kind of do a soot dry brushing of black. But as I feel that it's not really like burning anything, it's more maybe a steam power um, or what have you, it uh, wouldn't have that effect on it. So again, this is just a personal preference. So with uh, the backpack all done, we're going to move on to the uh, shoulder armor plate here. Uh, just like with the backpack, you could paint this whole arm off of the model, but uh, because I'm not doing this for any kind of crazy detailing or anything like that I decided to paint the whole model together but this part again is very easy uh, large flat panels um, with a nice medium base coating brush just make sure you get in everywhere that uh, you want to get I do paint on the inside of the armor plate up near his neck you don't have to do this part uh, as it um, it doesn't really show too too much on the model but I would know it's there so I decided to go ahead and paint that in. So already it's breaking up the flesh color a lot which is uh, what we want. We want this to stand out. So now that it's all dry it did take me two coats to uh, get this finish but uh, like with the other um, armor with the scores of skirmisher it's too bright so I'm going to dull this down. Uh, I'm going to come in and do a very very heavy wash of uh, Citadel's Agrax Earthshade. Uh, this will tone down the shininess of the brass, uh, make it look older, um, and that's why I'm doing a very heavy load of it because I really want that toned down. You could use a black for this, but then you're kind of uh, dulling the metallic in it a lot more than the Agrax does. The Agrax just keeps it in that same color spectrum of almost a brownish um, and it dulls down the sheen but it doesn't dull it down to the point where it would look like just say a yellow on top. So as you can see the difference between the backpack and the shoulder piece here how muted the, the brass does look and that's the effect I wanted to go for. I wanted to look worn, used, um, uh, dirty and things like that. So again. Doing the same thing, a heavy wash on the armor here, getting in with those rivets, um, the screws on the plate as well. So just to tint the overall color and dull it down. Now um, 
you want to make sure too, even though this is a heavy wash, you don't want it pooling too much in one area as that will uh, dry to pretty much a dark brown color anyway, so then you lose the brass in there. But uh, you can take this effect as far as you want or as little as you want. So here I'm just cleaning it up just to make sure it's not pooling anywhere. And again, you don't have to do the inside of this armor plate. You could just leave that uh, if you want to get it done quickly. But I would know it's there, so I decided to go ahead and paint that. So that's all we're going to do with the egg racks. Um, we're going to set this guy aside, let him dry for about half an hour. And then we're going to come in uh, and uh, make uh, it look really old and um, weathered as well. So... To do that, once he's all dry, uh, we're going to come in with a Citadel Technical Color, uh, Nyaloc Oxide, I'm probably butchering that name, but uh, this will give it the a patina look that a lot of brass gets. Um, as brass doesn't really rust, it becomes uh, this patinaed color. You could do this with a, um, a watered down teal color. Or mix your blue and greens um, till you get this but I have this on hand so uh, it's really fun uh, wash or paint it's a little thicker than a wash uh, but it's really fun to use on brass like this as it gives you a really nice effect now you want to make sure you don't use too much again it is thicker than a wash but um, I like how it applies uh, so here I'm just bringing it down to make it look like it's dripping you want to put this anywhere that you feel like water or moisture would collect on the model um, and instead of doing say like a battle damaged worn look I went with this one as uh, I wanted it to look like he's more weathered than actually battle worn but here uh, on that screw I kind of used a little too much so just like with a wash you can come in with just a brush and clean it up um, you it does dry kind of fast I found uh, and so it does leave kind of a pool mark on that other screw, as I'll show you here in a second there. Um, but I found that kind of worked. Uh, it kind of really worked with the model, so I just kind of left it. You could clean it up, but don't really need to. So again, here on the backpack, just kind of where I feel moisture would sit in, kind of along that weld line or whatever that it happens to be. Um, you could uh, put it in the chimney stacks as well. But I didn't want to do too much as uh, a little bit goes a long way with this. Your, your, your mind will automatically kind of fill in the blanks that, oh, this is really weathered and everything like that. So uh, with the old saying, less is more, is perfect with this thing, uh, with this uh, technical color. So as you can see here, it's all dried. Uh, again, just look for where you want your uh, moisture to collect. But uh, if you feel like it's a little too overpowering, then uh, you can easily come in and do what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to dry brush um, the model with just straight brass using a medium sized dry brush or whatever dry brush you happen to have on hand. And I'm just going to go up and down here on the model and just, uh, just to pick out the edges of the brass. Um, the camera doesn't really show it too much, but on those little screws, just the tops are being picked up with the brass so that it doesn't look extremely old. It just looks weathered. Um, so you could take this farther. You could highlight it more. I don't do any highlights. I just kind of do this dry brush and that's about it on the, on the model. So again, on the back here, just going to dry brush just to bring the brass back up and, um, there you have it. So that's with the dry brush. You can see it toned down that uh, oxide look uh, quite a bit. And uh, now I'm going to do some wear and tear. Uh, not so much as I did with the Scores of Skirmisher armor, but I am going to come in with uh, just the lead belcher and my sponge. And I'm just going to do the same stippling effect on the armor. Um, as I feel like it may have been more scratching if he's trying to get into a tight place or uh, you know an arrow or something ha hits him from afar more than uh, the scores of skirmisher where it would be up and close kind of battle damage I just wanted this to look like 
uh, it's kind of chipping um, worn down uh, you could highlight it up if you wanted to but I chose not to I didn't want to spend a lot of time uh, on these pieces here you could also do this effect for the smokestacks um, or the backpack in general I chose not to again I don't think this guy uh, would be hit too much back there but it's all personal preference and how you want to go about painting up your model this is just one way of many ways of doing it so that's it guys that's uh, how I do the engine and the armor on the Garitzi blood engine um, if you like what you see please comment subscribe uh, if you have any questions uh, please let me know follow me on Facebook let me know if there's something you want to see me do or try to do um, and again guys thanks for watching and have yourselves a great day